Hey guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. Today I wanted to go over why the Raspberry Pi is a perfect accessory for your 3D printer. It doesn't matter if you're running a printer like your Indoor 3 or Indoor 3 Pro, CR10, or a higher end printer like your Prusa or your Tazbots or anything like that. Um, they are great accessories regardless. There are multiple things that you can do with them. I mean, obviously there's Octoprint, but there's a lot more to it than just that if you wanted to. Uh, so I'm gonna go into those in more detail in this video. Also go over some of the accessories that you will want to get with it and um, talk about the differences between your Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 and help you make a decision on which one you might want to get. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first let's talk about Octoprint. So that's going to be the thing that everybody's the most familiar with. Um, it allows you to control your 3D printer remotely. Octopi is the pre-built image that you would put on your Raspberry Pi. It's really simple. I did a couple videos on setting all of that up. I'll link to them in the description. Um, and then you would connect to that using any computer that you have on the network um, or tablets and even phones. I also have mobile apps for it as well if you don't want to just use the browser interface. And with that, you would actually connect to the printer with USB. So you'd have a USB cable that connects to your Raspberry Pi and connects directly to the printer. Uh, you will want to make sure you get the right one for your printer. They have different sizes based on the printer. Uh, both of the printers that I'm using right now have a different connection. One of them is just standard USB. The other one's uh, micro USB. So make sure you're looking at what the actual connection type is for your printer before actually getting a cable or if you have any of them around the house, that works too. The next thing to point out really would be applying to uh, all of the options I'm going to be talking about, but it's you can power this multiple ways. Uh, you can use just your standard AC power supply, which also you can get a switch as well. So that would plug into here. You have your on and off switch, and then this plugs directly into the Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> or you can tie it directly into the printer's power supply if you're going to be using it with that one all the time. Uh, I will do a video going over how to set that up with the Indoor 3 Pro probably in the next couple weeks, so make sure you check that out when it's ready. And then if you're going to be using Octoprint, you're probably going to want to get a camera with it as well. You have a couple choices. You can get a Raspberry Pi camera like this. Uh, it just connects directly with the ribbon cable. Um, it connects right here. I'll go over that in a second. Or you can get a webcam that would connect to USB. Uh, only thing there is if you're planning on using this with multiple printers at the same time that will take away from your USB ports so it will reduce the number of printers you can connect to so as it stands right now unless you get some sort of USB hub you can have four printers connected to this um, you do have to pay attention to the mappings I guess that's the only real caveat uh, but you can't have four printers connected to one device all right so let's go over some of the accessories here um, I had, I actually bought this as a kit, I'll link it in the description below, but it comes with a nice little case, uh, all the heat sinks, if you just buy the Raspberry Pi, you don't have these heat sinks and they do heat up, especially if you're running anything that's more uh, compute intense, uh, so it's definitely worth getting those. Um, you have your SD card back here, I just standard micro SD. You have to get the converter, which <clears throat> I have one right here. It's just SD to USB. Uh, this will just plug in here, then you can connect it to your computer, just like that. And then if you're going to be uh, putting a monitor on this of any type, you will need this um, mini HDMI to HDMI converter so you can actually connect to it. And then you could use a keyboard and mouse with it as well, depending upon what OS you have on it initially. With Octoprint, that's kind of pointless because you can control it all remotely. But if you're planning on doing other things with it, it is an option. So I just wanted to make sure to kind of talk about that briefly. Also, if you're going to be using anything that is uh, CPU or compute intensive, I would recommend getting the fan. I have this already on the case, so I'm going to take it off. Um, it did come with this set as well, so it wasn't much extra, but it will help um, increase the longevity of the, of the unit itself. Uh, it will help disperse the heat and therefore helps the actual unit. And then I wanted to talk about cases. Uh, this was the case that came with the set I bought. If you're going to be piecing it together, you don't have to get the case. There are many options that you can just print from Thingiverse. Uh, some really good ones that can also mount directly onto your 3D printer as well. Uh, 
So just keep in mind what you're going to be using it for. If you're doing something where you're going to be moving it around all the time, possibly re-imaging it for different purposes and not using it dedicated to a 3D printer, uh, I would recommend getting a case like this, uh, especially when it comes with the kit at really no additional cost. Uh, when I pieced everything out individually, the case was basically free at that point. And sorry if you hear any banging in the background. There's a crazy bird outside that likes to run into the window constantly. I keep trying to scare him away, but he keeps coming back. It's the same bird. He's been there for a couple years now. <laughs> All right, so um, that really covers everything you'll need for running this with Octoprint. I have done multiple videos on how to set that up. So like I mentioned before, I will link those in the description. And Octoprint's really the main reason why people get Raspberry Pis for the 3D printers. Um, the wireless connectivity and the UI is just awesome. All right, so let's go on to the next one. This is a little bit different. Um, I haven't actually done this yet myself. It's one of the items that I have on my backlog. So I'll probably be doing a video on it pretty soon. Uh, it's using Clipper to basically add this as a compute unit to your printer. So it would offload all of the processing from your 3D printer onto here. And then the actual board on the 3D printer will just be responsible for the hardware. Uh, what that does is theoretically, it allows the printer to print faster. I wanna run more tests before I actually confirm that. That's why I said theoretically. Uh, I did read the documentation, but uh, documentation and real world examples aren't always the same. So I will be doing some research on that and then getting back to you guys. If you did go that route, you will want to dedicate the Raspberry Pi to the printer that you're working with. If you have more than one printer that you're wanting to do it with, you will want to have more than one. Uh, in those cases, the Raspberry Pi 3 is probably going to be more than enough. Um, this is a 4 here. I will go over this, some of the key differences here in a couple minutes. But just try to be smart with what you're buying. If you're going to be using it for the same thing all the time and the Raspberry Pi 3 meets the needs, go ahead and just get that and save the extra money and um, only get the four if you're going to use the additional memory and such as well but with clipper like i was saying i don't know if it's worth it it might be overkill it's something that i don't know if it's relatively new but you don't hear much about i want to do the research before giving you guys a recommendation either way it may be overkill i'm not sure yet but if you can double your print speed as an example for buying a Raspberry Pi for around 50 bucks, that might be worth it. Um, it just depends what you're printing and um, making sure that you can still get the same quality out of your printer. All right, so moving on to the next one. Uh, this isn't something that you see often. Uh, I wanted to try to get you some examples that you won't see as soon as you do a Google search, right? Um, that's not providing any value if that's all I gave you. Um, so the next one is you can actually install the Merlin firmware directly on your Raspberry Pi and use that to run the printer. Um, I haven't done it myself. There are some examples of it. Uh, it's getting deep into the uh, DIY uh, side of 3D printing. But if you were building a 3D printer, uh, that's definitely an option for you. I wouldn't go trying to modify one of the printers you already have. I don't know what it would buy you. It might, sure, it would be more performant. Uh, I just don't know if it's going to give you enough to justify potentially destroying what you have putting this in place. Uh, so it is an option. It is something that I have seen done. Uh, I will be walking through that myself. I'm going to buy a Raspberry Pi 3 for that. Uh, just in case I do break anything, I won't be too upset. But it is a really neat concept, especially if you're building your own printer. Uh, instead of buying some of the control boards that are dedicated for this, you can get one of these. I think you'll still have to get a control board of some sort to connect all of the stepper motors and stuff too. Uh, but it can be a lower end one. It's almost the same concept of using Clipper where it's offloading all of the processing onto the more powerful board. Um, but it will actually be running Merlin as well. So if you guys are interested, leave a comment below and I'll try to set something up walking through all of that. Um, I don't want to spend the time doing an in-depth video if nobody's going to be interested in it though. So if you are interested, make sure you leave a comment below. All right, moving on. So the last use case that I wanted to cover was using the Raspberry Pi with a Pi screen. They're a seven inch touchscreen screen that will allow you to pretty much replace what you have on the printer itself. Um, that's more if you're wanting to set everything up locally and not use Octoprint. Uh, 
So again, it's gonna be great for a uh, DIY setup or something along those lines, or if you're trying to upgrade the user interface on one of your printers. It's not gonna be much value if you're planning on using Octoprint in the long run anyways, though I guess it could provide some value if you're still wanting to use the interface as well. Uh, it's really more of a preference thing. Personally, if I was gonna be using Octoprint, I would not spend the money on that because you will have to dedicate a Raspberry Pi and the Pi screen to the printer. Uh, so it's really just more of a preference and what are you looking to do long term. If you only have one printer that you're working with and you want to run uh, Octoprint and still have the option to control everything locally with the touchscreen, uh, it could be a good use case as well. Um, I have seen it done. It is pretty nice. I've done it before on one of my old printers. Um, if you guys are interested, I can do a video on that one as well. Just let me know. Um, again, some of these are edge cases, so I don't want to just go spending several hours doing a video if nobody's interested in it. Um, but if there is interest, I would love to do it for you guys, so just let me know. All right, then lastly, I wanted to go over some of the differences between your Octoprint 4, which, which is what I have here, and your 3, or sorry, the 3 Plus. <clears throat> so there's really three main differences that are important. The first one being the processor itself, it's going to be a little bit quicker. It's not a huge difference on the processor, but it's definitely noticeable. You will get a larger bump in performance if you're also coupling it with one of the other upgrades as well. Um, so your Raspberry Pi 3, you can get one gig of memory with it, where with the 4, you have three options. You can do one, two, or four gigs of memory. Uh, so it depends what you're wanting to use, if you're wanting the future proof or, or whatever the case may be. Um, this is the four gig memory, but if you're adding the additional memory and with the processor bump, you will see a noticeable performance increase. The last major difference between the two are uh, the USB ports. So they both will still have uh, four USB ports, but in this case, uh, with the Raspberry Pi 4s, uh, two of them are USB 3.0, so it will give you a quicker interface. Um, again, it depends what you're using it for. If you're only going to be using it for Octoprint or just to control one or two things, the Raspberry Pi 3 Plus is going to meet all the needs. If you're wanting to be able to potentially swap them out later on, do other things with them, then go back to using Octoprint or just tinkering with them, uh, I would recommend the 4. It's not much more expensive. I mean, none of these are really expensive, but you're talking the difference of, uh, depending upon which models, $20 to $40. Um, so I guess it does add up if you're getting multiple units, but if you're just getting one or two, it might be worth it for you. Or just get a couple Raspberry Pi 3s if you're planning on getting multiple ones and then maybe A4, uh, see if you like the performance difference or if it's worth it to you. Um, in most cases, unless you're doing anything extremely intensive on them, uh, the 3 is gonna be more than enough for 90% of the use cases I think we would be talking about. <clears throat> now, if you were trying to do some retro gaming on these, which I know some people that have done, uh, I've done it as well. Um, the four will give you a nice little bump. So it just really, it depends what you're trying to do with it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of the differences and that the three will meet the needs for pretty much everything that we're doing. And that even though I've got the four here, the three will meet the needs for pretty much everything we'll be doing. So I don't want you to buy something that's more expensive just because that's what I'm showing and what I have. Uh, it's just a decision I made and it's not necessarily one that you would have to make or should make. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I'll link to both of them in the description below. All right, so that was a somewhat quick overview of some of the things you can do uh, with the 3D printer using a Raspberry Pi. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want me to go into more detail on any of those or do a more in-depth how-to video covering those topics, uh, please let me know. I would love to do it. But like I said, I don't want to do it if nobody's going to be watching it. So uh, just let me know if you're interested. All right, and then one last thing before we go ahead and end this video, uh, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, it'll really help this channel out. Uh, we're a little bit less than two months old and over 150 subscribers. So thank you. I really appreciate that. That's all I have for this video. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.